Hello everybody, this is Zach said it again. I'm your host, Zach Cooley, and I'm honored to be here with my lifelong buddy, Chris DiOrio. How are you, man? Thanks for being with me. Zach, I'm doing well. How about you? I am good. Thank you for being with me today. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you asking me. Yeah, we uh, we go way, way back and and have a lot of great memories together. But, now, now, you're dating yourself, Zach, when you say that. I'm already old. You don't want to sound old by saying that. Well, however old I am, you'll always be, what, about 10, 15 years old or something like that? So. Maybe more. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Well, we'll, yeah. Go with, we'll go with 10. How about that? All right. That sounds good. That sounds good. Um, but we're here today to talk about your... Uh, efforts with the Run for the Wall, and for, for anyone in the Whitfield area who doesn't know what the Run for the Wall is, if that's possible, um, the Run for the Wall is where a group of motorcyclists, uh, tra- travel, veteran motorcyclists, uh, travel across the country from California to Washington, D.C. to the Vietnam War Memorial. Is that correct, Chris? That is correct. Um, they are, uh, this, it started, uh, and, and I might have my dates wrong. Trent crew might listen to this and fuss at me, but um, I believe it started in the 90s, early 90s, um, and it was Vietnam vets. Uh-huh. Uh, you, know, you know, it started off with, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, 10 or 15 of them, and, uh, they, you know, they left from California and, um, you know, rode to the, uh, uh, to the Viet- Vietnam Memorial Wall. Um, and it just grew and grew and grew every year. And um, before long, it got so big, they ended up having to split the routes into three different routes. Um, the one that comes through Whitfield is the southern route. Okay. They have a, um, they have a mid-route and a central route. Okay, great. And how many is in the group that you travel with? We've got about 350 riding this year. Um, Total group that will uh, uh, go to D.C. and hook up will be about 1,300. Wow. Yeah, it's a a big group. I had no idea it was that big already. Yeah, Yeah, there's probably 300, 320 per route. Um, that, that come, they all start together in California and um, branch off into the three different routes and emerge again in, um, in Washington, D.C. Wonderful. And how many years have you been riding with them? I've been doing this for seven years. Seven years. Now, seven. Uh, now in your seven years... Uh, you are, tell me again what your title is that we just discussed. Yeah, uh, I've been, I've been riding with them for seven years. I've been the Virginia State Coordinator for six of those seven years. Okay, and what does that entail? That's basically getting the riders, my 350 riders, from Bristol, Virginia, to DC, um, and that includes um, we um, we don't book the hotel rooms, but we um, schedule all the hotel rooms, get them a, a, a discount on the rates. Um, we set up uh, food for the riders. They don't pay for anything coming through Virginia. We we get their lunch, uh, breakfast, and dinner all the way through. Um, lots of people volunteer for this. A lot of money and time goes into it. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I've got to get the, them through here. We've got, um, three fuel stops, uh, and just imagine 350 motorcycles pulling up at a sheets and getting gas. Yeah, I'm sure that would take more than one person to coordinate. They do, and that is, they actually have a fuel team. Uh, there's a total fuel team, um, mainly consisting of... Uh, you know, veterans, 
and um, they handle gassing us up. Um, it is, I mean, these guys are in the military. I mean, everything is is precise. Everything is well coordinated and precise to get us through these areas. And Whitfield has always been, you know, it is a central stop for, it's a central stop by being the halfway point between Florida and the Great Lakes. But, with, right. but yeah. Whitfield has always been a very important stop to the run for the wall uh, people. And been, Whitfield has been a very big part of Run for the Wall for many years. You want to talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, uh, Whitfield is, and I'm not, and I'm not saying this because I'm from Whitfield or talking about Whitfield, but according to the riders, Whitfield is one of their favorite stops. Um, they feel uh, very welcome here, um, and there is a slew. Uh, volunteers that help out in um, Whitfield, um, Amy Mullins and um, and um, and those 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 uh, people they um, you know coordinate everything for us. You know we've got drinks when we get there. They've got the program set up. They've got all the. I just have to call Amy and I'm like Rosalie, Rosalie Duke. Um, I forgot to mention her. I just give those guys a call. It's set up. I'm done. I don't have to do anything. So they make my job super easy. Well, that is fantastic. What's it like to ride with those guys? Um, it's pretty scary at first. Um, uh, you know, um, most of the time when we ride, you know, people around here, we're kind of, you know, you know, we, we're safe and, and we ride staggered and everything. But, uh, you know, these guys are pretty precise, like I said. And there's times when you're riding side by side from some dude, you don't know who he is, you don't know how long he's been riding, and you're going 70 miles an hour right next to him. Um, it can get a little scary. Um, we ride up with the uh, Virginia State Police um, and uh, down to Bristol, and that's that's pretty fun. When we ride with the troopers, we do not have to worry about the speed limit. Okay. They set the pace, so that's always uh, fun. But um, there's a, a, a group within the group. It's called the Missing Man Formation. Uh-huh. And that's five riders. That's five riders. You have right. two riding side, side by side. You have one in the middle. And then you have two riding behind them. And the missing rider there is called the Missing Man Formation. And that is for to represent... Uh, you know, missing in action, uh, veterans, soldiers, and uh, when you ride in that position, um, they, you know, they always said, oh, you can feel somebody riding next to you. You look over, there's nobody there, but you can feel them, and I'll, yeah, whatever. Well, it's true. It is the weirdest feeling in the world when you do that, um, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, anybody who's, who's, who plans on riding, uh, definitely ask if you can get in that formation sometime. It's uh, it's an honor to ride there, and it's uh, pretty neat. And you definitely feel the energy of those you are riding for, those those you are honoring. Absolutely, yeah. That's um, you know that, that's the that's the whole point of this thing. You know, it, it's 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 not a motorcycle gang, and it's not you know they don't go to the hotels and get drunk and tear up the hotel. It's you know, hey, these guys are riding for you know their friends mm-hmm. um, who are no longer with us. Um, you know, and these guys have a camaraderie that I've never been in the military, but um, you know, just watching these guys. Um, you can definitely feel um, that they really care and love each other. And it's obviously a very emotional experience as well. It is. Um, like I said, the missing man formation, that, that, that's an emotional. Um, you know, we talk, we, we, um, we have programs at every stop we make and, and talk about, you know, uh, a missing in action um, soldier or, 
or you know, um, you know, you know, any any kind of stories that they have. Um, and, and we have a good time too. Um, mm-hmm. It's uh, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. It's um, sure. It's fun riding with these guys. They are they are they are super nice. They're super fun. Uh, we have a good time at meals. Um, great fellowship. But when we get to the wall, man, um, you know, uh, I don't think you have to be told to, you know, stop cutting up and uh, and, and take this seriously. You, you you're not told that. It's it's it. You just feel that it's a given. You walk on to the lawn, and it it is it's a very sobering um, experience. Right, and of course, you mentioned Trent Crew, our beloved longtime mayor and friend of Whitfield, Virginia. He did, yes. I, I covered many years ago, he did the whole ride with him from California to D.C. And uh, I covered that, and I know he's he's an amazing part of this as well. He is. He, um, yeah, he got me into it. We go to, we go to church together, uh, mm-hmm. Trent and I. And, right. uh, you know, we, we, we both like to ride motorcycles. And, um, you know, he said, hey, man, why don't you just come and ride with me? You know, we'll just, we we're, we're not going to go very far. Let's just go to Lynchburg. That first year that I went um, uh, was in 2018. And um, I was an FNG. Um, and that uh, is a first time rider. Um, when, when you sign up and, um, what, you know, just, uh, you know, rode what, what, 200 miles with those guys. And I was, I was like, man, this is awesome. This is great. I want to mm-hmm. help these guys and support these guys and girls. Right. Oh, they're women as well. That's great. Yes. Uh, are, are most of these people Vietnam veterans or do you have veterans from other wars as well? We do have veterans from other wars. Um, after, a matter of fact, after this, after they finish in D.C., some riders will go, and I think it's in Illinois, um, they go to the Sandbox, and that is a memorial for, you know, the more recent, um, you know, Desert Storm and, and uh, you know, those, those wars there. Um, and they'll mm-hmm. ride on over there. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I was looking at a, a, a demographics of the riders, and um, they are of Vietnam age, um, you know, and, and they're getting older. They're in their 70s, you know, and, and, and some are in the 80s. Wow. And it's really good to see. It's really good to see some of these new veterans coming in, um, and their stories are just as emotional and exciting as the, the, the Vietnam soap stories. Absolutely, and they are every they are every bit as much a hero as those seventy and eighty year olds. Absolutely, yeah, and man, it's the same thing, man. You get um, you get a seventy five year old Vietnam vet talking to a twenty one year old, um, you know, uh, Afghan vet, and and you know, just the camaraderie between those guys is um, it, it, it's it's something to see. Yeah, and we, and I mean, we have no clue. If you've not served in the military, particularly during wartime, we have no clue what these men and women have seen and have sacrificed for the freedoms that we have. And we, we owe them all the respect and, and, and heroism that we can muster. Um, Absolutely, yeah. These, I mean, yeah, these guys are great, and uh, they've been through it, man. Yeah. But speaking of, you know, the older veterans, uh, it must be amazing to see people 70, 80 years old still out there riding and, and making that trip, which is no easy trip. But they do it because of their dedication to honoring their friends. Absolutely, yeah. These, you know, and and these guys have been riding for you know fifty years, man. I mean, right. you know, they 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 they're they're in condition. They can ride some some extra wheels on some of their motorcycles. You know, a lot of you know uh, trikes in the group and everything. But hey, man, they're still out riding and doing this thing. And hey, they go through these weathers and storms and rain and heat and and you know. Um, I think when they went through Kansas earlier this week, um, they went through a hailstorm that was almost turning into a tornado. 
and, and these guys are just riding right through it. It's nothing for them. Yeah. And, it, you know, you have to think about that. You, you can, somebody can just as easily fly in an airplane to a monument or or drive in a car and we think, oh, we're driving through a hailstorm in a car. We've got it bad. But these people are, they have no protection other than what they're wearing on their person to keep them from this severe weather. That's it. I mean, you know, they 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 probably have rain gear and everything, but man, it uh, it's still scary riding in the dark and in in the wet weather. It it's uh, I don't care to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. So, how how far do you actually ride with them again? For me, for me this year, um, I, I I wanted to go down further. Um, the the moose riders from Whitfield. They, uh, I don't know if they went all the way to Texas, but they meet up with them in Texas. Okay. Uh, and, and, and ride. I was going to ride with them, but my uh, niece, Catherine, graduated from high school. So we were in Fredericksburg all, right. all weekend. And, um, and so I was like, well, I'll just, uh, I'll just ride up and meet them in Bristol. And um, uh, I'm actually not going to go to D.C. this year either. I'm pretty lame. Um, uh, We've got some things to do this weekend for Memorial Day, but um, okay. uh, that's just, you know, I've, I've went from Whitfield to D.C. with them uh, just a couple of days, and, um, you know, I've met some great people, people who I have uh, uh, stayed in contact with over the years, and, um, you know, right. if ever I'm in Murfreesburg, Tennessee, i got a place to stay. Um, right. It's great. These guys, it's just great. Well, uh, and, how, and how far does this... Virginia State Police follow you when you go. They they meet us they meet up with us in Bristol right at the state we meet at the Harley Davidson shop in Bristol. Okay. And they they um they escort us uh, all the way to the DC line. Um they cannot go into DC. Right. Um, uh so they peel off and uh, last year um I guess it was um a DC. Uh, motorcycle uh, police unit, um, but they were on these black BMWs, these black helmets, and man, you didn't, you, they just took us through the city like, you know, I don't know, we were the president or something. It was great. Exactly. Uh, That's uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I know it probably irritates motorists on the interstate, but, um, you know, uh, they allow us to shut down the interstate as we go by. We have uh, road guards who are also volunteers, and they'll stop at the exits and um, you know block off the exits, and the troopers help them with that. And then they move on and open up back the exits. So you know we're we're really super lucky to have the Virginia State Police, and um, the, you know we uh, we have the road to ourselves. Um, we don't have to worry about anything. Right, that is amazing, and and well deserved, I would say. Yeah, I think, and I, I don't think it ties up traffic that much. I don't think I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, but uh, you know, if My, you didn't know what was happening, I think you would get angry. Right, most people though are, you know, very moved by watching these riders come through. It's always a big event in Whitfield. The kids at Spiller love it. My daughter's in fourth grade at Spiller. Um, uh, it, you know, it's it's very... Um, it's very ceremonious, if that's the right word. Yes, and speaking of ceremony, is somebody singing, singing there Wednesday? Yep, that's what we were getting to. You were talking about that you have... T- we were talking about that we have um, pro- uh, pr- you have programs at every stop that you right. a- every city that you stop in and with Phil is no exception um, t- well you can talk a little bit about the uh, overview of the program what it's going to be um, Wednesday the 22nd at 4 o'clock that's right Yep, yep, we'll roll in there about 4 o'clock and, uh, you know, uh, just give us a time to, um, you know, get our bearings and get off the motorcycles and, um, you know, uh, uh, we, 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 they, the, the, the veterans love when you go up to them and talk to them. And, and, and by the way, you need to talk to these people. You need to talk to these men and women um, about 
what they're doing because when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, like I said, they're older, and once they're gone, they're gone. Their stories are gone. Um, you know, you need to really speak with older people and listen to what they say, uh, whether they were in war or whatever. I mean, it's just so important to listen to older people. Um, but anyway, getting back to the ceremony, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll have a nice one there, and um, you probably know more about the ceremony than I do. Well, I just know that uh, Rosalie... Uh, was kind enough to invite uh, my wife to be to sing a couple of patriotic songs at the event on Tuesday, which she was very honored to do. And in my personal and partial opinion, uh, I don't think they could have chosen a better one. Uh, she's she's going to be doing um, she's going to be doing God bless America. And my country, tis of thee, acapella, and uh, oh, I, that, that's, uh, man, that's, uh, that's a little nerve-wracking there in itself. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that uh, the folks will be very moved. Uh, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I wish I had a fraction of the talent that she had. All right. Well, it's good talking to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. I'll see you Wednesday. All right. We'll see you, buddy. Amen. Bye.